So let's look at some other problems now. So we have this other curve. It's a parabola as well. X squared minus X minus one. And we're not going to plot this because really we just need to use the formula. We're going to be given two points in each of these cases, and we're looking for an average rate of change of zero. And remember, the average rate of change is just the slope of the line between these two points. So let me write this out. It's the average rate of change. And that formula is just going to be the difference in the y values divided by the difference in the x values from those two points. Remember, we're dealing with just two points on our curve, x1, y1, and x2, y2. But you might also see it in function notation, so you want to be comfortable using that as well. This time we have the function f. So it might also be f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. So this problem is a bit long because we're going to have to calculate it for four different points because we want to know which interval the average rate of change is zero on. So let's start with A. In that case, we have an x value of minus 3. That's the first part of the interval. That's the lowest part. And an x value of minus 2. And to find the y values, we're just going to plug them in. So we have f of minus 3. And we get 9 minus negative 3, so that's plus 3. So 9 plus 3 is 12, minus 1 is 11. And when we plug in negative 2, we get 4 minus negative 2, so that's plus 4. So that's 8 minus 1, which is 7. So if we want to calculate the average rate of change, we're just finding the slope of the points, uh, the slope of the line between these two points. And we'll call this x2 and this x1. So this is y2 and y1. So you have 7 minus 11 divided by the x value associated with the y value of 7. So that's negative 2 minus the other x value, which is negative 3. And here you get minus 4 over minus 2 plus 3, which is 1. So that's an average rate of changes of negative 4. So what this means is that on average, between these two points, when x goes over 1, the y value goes down 4 units. Or essentially, that's what a represents. So that's not an average rate of change of 0. So we can eliminate that one. Now let's go to b, and we'll do that right here. So for b, we have x is 2 and x is 3. We're going to plug those into the function. So f of 2, you get 4 minus 2 minus 1, which would be 1. And f of 3, you get 9 minus 3 minus 1, which would be 5. And so calculating the slope here, and I always like to use m for slope, just because that was introduced with slope-intercept form when studying linear equation, y equals mx plus b. So we'll use m for slope, or this average rate of change. In this case, they are the same thing, because we're finding the slope of the line between these two points. And... We'll use this as x2, and this is x1. So we have 5 for our y2, minus 1 for y1, and then 3 minus 2. So that's 4 over 1. But again, this is not an average range, average rate of change of 0. This means for every 1 we go over, we're going to go up 4 units on average between an x value of 2 and 3. So it's not b. Now we can try choice c here. And for that one, we've got x is minus 1 and x is 2. We plug these into our functions to find the y values. So minus 1 squared is 1 minus negative 1, so that's plus 1. So we have 1 plus 1, which is 2, minus 1, which is 1. And then f of 2, we have 4 minus 2 minus 1, which is 1. And really what we're looking for here is that with these same x values, to get an average rate of change of zero, we want the change in the y values to be zero. So that's what we're looking for here, and you can see that's what we have. Because if we now use our formula, let's call this x2, and that's x1. So you have one minus one over two minus negative one. So that becomes zero over three, which is zero. 
So on average, every time x goes over, y does not go up or down. It stays the same. So c is going to be our correct answer. And if you wanted, you can keep going and just double check with number our letter D. So for this one, let me use a different color. So for this one, we have x is minus 5 and x is 5. We're going to plug those into the function. So f of minus 5, that would be 25 plus 5, which is 30, minus 1, which is 29. And f of 5, that would be 25 minus 5 minus 1, so that's 19. But you can see the change in the y values is not zero. We actually go down 10 units. And so if you plug this into the slope formula, the y values, let's call this x2 and x1, the y values would be 19 minus 29, and the x values would be 5 minus negative 5. And so you get minus 10 over 10, which is negative 1. So on average, between these points, the function, every time it goes over 1, it goes down 1. So as you can see, D would not be correct. Though, honestly, once you recognize what you're looking for, which is choice C, you can stop right there. This D value, this is just, just to double check and make sure that for sure C is the right answer.